Oh, welcome everyone to a new video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the chemistry of quinolines and isoquinolines. And it is going to be from the book Organic Chemistry by Clayton. And here we are discussing chapter 30, Organic Hematocyclic Part 2. So if we talk about the structure of the simple quinolines, this is the structure of the quinolines and it can be synthesized if we carry out a disconnect at this carbon nitrogen position, which is the formation of carbon nitrogen imine. So if we carry out this particular disconnection, what we'll end up having is an uh, amine here and an aldehyde, which can simply form an imine and the final compound. And if we have a disconnect here, carbon-carbon disconnect, then we will end up getting is a simple aniline and 1,3-dialdehyde, which can be also called malonic dialdehyde. But the issue is this dialdehyde does not exist. So this does not exist. So that is the reason why this particular strategy is not a good strategy. It looks in term, it looks good in terms of design, but this is not very, very reliable. You can say if you cannot make this particular compound, then how can you make the quinolines from that? So that's the reason why this is not a good strategy. Now, however, if we have a substitution at two and four position, let us suppose in the case of quinolines, and if we carry out a disconnect here, the same thing. What we can have is a uh, amine aniline okay and here what we can have is a ketone and if we form an imine what we can end up getting is a quinoline right and if we have a carbon carbon disconnect then we can have an aniline and one three dark dicarbonate now this this is pretty much possible in this particular case if we have a substitution at two and four position so this was the retrosynthetic analysis of quinolines having substitution for position two and four Four. So now let's look at their forward synthesis and see what is an issue with even such a disconnect, which looks pretty reasonable. Okay, so the first step is basically the formation of an imine, which can be catalyzed in presence of an acid or Lewis acid, you can say. So what we have is the formation of imine. Here the water is ejected out of the system to form an imine. And if we draw the other tautomer, which is then inamine, right? What is happening is basically this is what is happening. So this is the other tautomer, which is then inamine. But this is not the correct confirmation for the cyclization to take place because in the next step, what do you want? You want this particular nitrogen to come here and this benzene ring to attack the carbonyl. But if we look at the orientation of this, both these groups, they are trans to each other. So they do not have the proper orientation or they are not properly oriented in space to undergo cyclization. So what happened? This has to orient itself in a way so that the benzene ring can attack. So here the lone pair of nitrogen comes. So here this attacks on the carbonyl to give you this particular compound. Here what we have is a deprotonation and then elimination of water to give you the final compound. So we can clearly see, although this strategy looks elegant, but it is this conformer which is more stable. So the compound prefers to stay in this conformer rather than this conformer that is a cis and this is trans. This is more stable apparently than this one. So although it might be converting, there might be some sort of an um, equilibration happening in this case, but it's not good enough to give an elegant synthesis to such quinoline. So now what we are going to discuss is basically one of a very important name reaction that is the scarab reaction, which is mostly used for the synthesis of the Quinoline. So that is exactly what we are going to discuss. So now we are going to look at the scarab reaction. So in this particular reaction, rather than using the diketone, what we use is an unsaturated carbonyl. So you can say this type of carbonyls we can use. Now, in previous strategies, what we saw that just the previously, if we have a substitution at two or four position, this is even the strategy is fine. That's what we said. But if these two are not symmetrical, then even this particular strategy is really, really problematic. Now, so in the scarab synthesis, as I said, that instead of diketone, what we start is from the conjugated ketones, right? So the first reaction is basically what we take. We take conjugated ketone along with an aniline and we treat it, okay, within the presence of an acid, it could be H2SO4. So, so the first step is basically is the conjugate addition of the aniline to form such adducts. And when you expose this to a Lewis acid, so what happens? This particular ring attacks the carbonyl to give you this particular compound. Now, in this particular case, we can clearly see why the attack is taking place. Because 
देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ यू नो रोटेशन अराउंड दिस पर्टिकुलर कार्बन कार्बन सिंगल बॉन्ड सपोज इफ वी हैव दिस वन दैट्स वॉट आई एम से we have an h and this is what we have here this is this entire chain can move around there is no restriction of rotation whereas in this in this particular case what you have had is an enamine formation that is the reason why their conformational stain does not allow the reaction to take place whereas in this case nothing as such exists and two second most important thing let us suppose you could be asked that this particular reaction whether it will be facilitated by electron donating group or electron withdrawing group we can clearly see that here is this is this particular ring which acts as a carbonyl so what it clearly means that if you have an electron withdrawing group it is going to withdraw the electron density means it is going to make this entire ring electron deficient so this attack is not going to be favorable so for this particular reaction to take place either what you need is an unsubstituted anion or aniline having electron donating group so these are some of the basics that you could be asked in the interviews or elsewhere or even in the exam as well where you could be given a set of three anilines let us suppose you could be given these three anilines nh3 having no2 or you could can have the aniline ome okay and you can have the simple aniline and they could be asking you arrange these three anilines in increasing order of their reactivity in the scan of reaction so if you understand this basic if you understand this mechanism then you will be able to easily crack the problem now let's coming back to the synthesis so after the conjugate addition when you expose it to the acid so this is what you get so this is how it is taking place now and after that what you have is basically simply the elimination of water and when you oxidize this this can be done with the presence of the any oxidizing agent it could be ddq it could be nitrobenzene so what you end up getting is the desired quinoline so this is a very elegant strategy for the synthesis of these particular molecule now let us look at the example that has been discussed in the book so here what we have is a para substituted aniline they have not described this particular substitutions and so what they have done is basically they have taken the aniline they have taken glycerol nitrobenzene H2SO4 as an acid and heat it over 100 degrees. So what it gives you is basically this four substituted uh, quinoline, right? So what is actually what is the issue with this particular reaction? The issue is the reaction is very very vigorous because you are mixing all everything together and when you are heating it, there is a lot of exotherm and this is not a preferred approach because what is happening? This glycerol it is first of all getting converted into acrolein in c2 so that is what is happening there is a dehydration as a result of which you are getting acrolein and this acrolein is reacting with aniline right and the role of nitrobenzene is basically an oxidant so here at this stage it basically convert this uh, amine into quinoline and in the process this is getting reduced okay so this is what is happening and h2so4 is basically facilitating this particular cycle so that is the attack of benzene ring onto the carbonyl so these are the role of the certain reagents and why this is not a preferred approach because this is a very vigorous reaction although this is one of the very early protocols so how we can improve the process we can improve the process by going step wise so instead of mixing everything together first of all what we can do is basically make an adapt of it so what we can do basically start from the acrolein treated with the aniline so we know it is going to attack in a conjugate manner now we can easily make an isolates such intermediate these are not an intermediate these are stable compounds we can easily isolate them and when we isolate them we can simply then treat it in presence of the acid it comes here it is going to attack the aldehyde which is going to give us this particular compound after dehydration and when this is exposed to the oxidation using ddq we can end up getting the desired quinoline right here here it could be acrolein or here instead of the aldehyde it could be any r group it could be ketone as well so the reaction works perfectly fine okay so making this adapt really really helps and makes this particular reaction as a very elegant approach to synthesize the ice to synthesize the quinolines okay so here we are going to be talking about one of the application of the scarab reaction for the synthesis of oxine and this is a very important ligand this is a very important ligand in organic chemistry so it has been utilized in various metal catalyzed coupling reactions and this forms a complex of various or various 
transition metal compounds, especially the complex of oxine with copper are pretty famous. So they can easily coordinate with the uh, copper to form the complex. So how scarab reaction was utilized to synthesize it? We can see, so what we start is basically two amino phenol and this particular moiety we can see it is highly activated it is activated as i said the presence of electron donating group what we have is a phenol which can donate the electron density into the ring as a result of which this entire molecule is very nucleophilic it is very nucleophilic that is the reason why you do not need an activation with stronger acids like h2so4 that is the reason why they have used acidic acid which is a weak acid even the weak acid can bring this reaction into the forward direction because what we have is a activated nucleophile so what they have used in an acrolein and here ferrous sulfate uh, uh, ferboric acid complex has been used as an oxidant in the reaction so that is how quinolines can be synthesized with scarab reactions and so as far as the synthesis of isoquinolines is concerned basically what we start is from two aryl amines so one two two aryl amines so these aryls again have has to be electron donating groups attached to it because in this particular reaction as well you have the benzene ring which attacks the carbon so the first step of the reaction is basically a treatment with an acid chloride here the r group it could be phenyl or it could be uh, aliphatic it could be any aliphatic group like methyl ethyl so you can imagine having various substituents at this position so the first step is basically simply the formation of an amide moiety and then the second step which is the key step in this particular reaction is when you expose this amide to POCl3 an intermolecular Wills reaction happens to give you this framework which can be aromatized to the desired isoquinolines and here we can see what we use is the palladium zero so palladium or carbon can be used to aromatize the benzene compounds or such isoquinolines if we talk about this particular reaction we can clearly see what must be happening here what we have is a POCl3 right so the lone pair of electron nitrogen comes and it is going to attack and the POCl3 is going to leave so the mechanism is pretty straightforward so here what we have is an NH this one here here we have is an R group here oxygen it is attached to PO this one CL CL and the CL that was ejected it comes and this comes here it is going to leave so what we have formed is basically an activated intermediate so that is exactly what we have done we have activated this entire species so what we have is a chloro here what we have is an R group NH plus that is exactly once you have this activation it is this ring which attacks this carbon and it is going to open and we have this intermediate so we have NH we have chloro here we have R here so we have H here so there are a couple of things that are happening here so what do we you can have these lone pair of they come and the chloro leaves and the second is aromatization is also happening it could be aromatization is also happening these lone pair of are coming back so in the overall sequence this is exactly what you are forming and the last step is the aromatization so this is how we can synthesize the isoquinolines as well now we are going to talk about the synthesis of quinolones and these uh, compounds having this quinolone framework are very very important because these compounds exhibit antibacterial properties i mean there are a lot of drugs like ofloxacin and rosoxacin uh, which have this quinolone framework and they are drugs having antibacterial properties so now we can see how we can synthesize this drug again the first thing is basically the disconnect from this carbon nitrogen and at the same time but we can disconnect from the carbon carbon so to introduce this carbon carbon bond we can take advantage of the friedel craft alkylation and to install this uh, carbon nitrogen bond we can fall upon the enamine approach now so but it will give us a very simple aniline so that is the reason why this strategy looks pretty attractive so but if we have a disconnection what we'll end up having having is such compound and having an aldehyde group three carbonyl compounds which makes it pretty unstable in fact aldehydes whenever you have aldehydes in a short aliphatic ring they are pretty unstable to deal with but what we can do is basically we can instead of having a free aldehyde we can take advantage of 
we can convert it into an enol enol ether so let us suppose if we expose this compound to acidic condition okay if i expose this to acidic condition this is nothing but an enol ether this is under going to this is going to undergo hydrolysis to form the oh so this is going to enolize to give me the aldehyde in situ in the reaction but such compounds are pretty stable having let me just write it high here and they can be easily formed such enol ether can be easily formed if we start from the diethyl malonate and carry out the reaction with ethyl for ethyl ortho formate in acidic anhydride so basically so once we have the stable intermediate in hand that's exactly what we are doing in reaction when we are mixing aniline with such compounds there is an in situ generation uh, in situ generation of a aldehyde under acidic condition because although they have not mentioned the acidic condition but we presume for this particular reaction to take place you need some sort of an activation by weaker acid or the stronger acid so this is exactly what is happening so once you have a generation of aldehyde it attacks here to form this intermediate and as soon as you heat what is happening so this is coming here and it is going to attack the carbonyl of the aster to give you the desired framework so the last step is pretty simple the hydrolysis of the aster to acid to give you the desired compound so this is a pretty elegant strategy to synthesize such compound now we are going to look at how this drug that is rosoxacin can be synthesized in fact this can be synthesized by one of the methods that i discussed earlier which is the hans ester hans synthesis hans ester synthesis okay that's exactly they have employed to synthesis rosoxacin now let's look at that so here we are going to talk about the synthesis of rosoxacin and so the simplest starting material that we can cho choose is basically ammonia and this alkyne and aromatic aldehyde this particular method which is the hans synthesis i've already discussed this method which is employed for the synthesis of pyridine instead of the alkyne you can also use as basically such sort of, sort of sort of a beta keto esters in this particular reactions as well okay so this is also what we can use so for this particular reaction to take place we know the ph of the reaction has to be around 8.5 and which is achieved when you using ammonia and the source of the ammonia can be ammonium hydroxide it can be ammonium acetate so when you mix three these three compounds in one proportion what you end up getting is the formation of so when you are mixing these in equal proportion this is the compound that you are form and what what is the role of hno3 hno3 is nothing but is it is actually acting as an oxidizing agent to convert this compound into the desired pyridine architecture now once we have this compound what we are doing is basically hydrolyzing the ester and decarboxylation to get give us this this framework and as soon as we have this aniline this is exactly what we are using this can be generated by the reaction of diethylmalonate which we saw previously and try uh, ethyl ortho formed in acetic anhydride on reaction this is exactly what we end up getting now this can be easily converted into various step to the desired compound so we can see how previous strategy that we used or we learned has been successfully employed for the synthesis of this particular molecule this is a very very important reaction actually so this is something that can be asked in the exam now just like we saw in the case of the pyridones right in the case of the pyridones what we saw when we have the pyridones right like these pyridones they can be easily converted into the chloro compound and then can be attacked by alcohols and amines similarly in the case of the quinones you can have the same case so here it comes this comes here and it attacks the pocl3 to give us the chloro derivative so once you have a chloro derivative this can be easily treated with the various amines as well as the alcohols to have a substitution at the four position to give us the desired quinones so from the quinones we can get the quinones via two step protocol that is a treatment with pocl3 and then with the amine or the uh, alcohol so this was pretty much about the quinones so we are going to talk about the last part of this particular chapter which is says more heteroatoms in the fuse ring means more choice in synthesis what it means that the more is the number of heteroatoms in the molecule the more disconnect we can have so here what we are going to talk about is this architecture which looks pretty difficult which is the fuse ring which is the thing but imidazo pyridazine so here what we have is this pyridazine moiety and if we look at this moiety 
If we look at this part, this is nothing but an imidazole. But if we look at this part, this is nothing but a pyridazine. So this is nothing but this is a 10 electron aromatic system, which is pretty elegant. How do we synthesize that? This is something that we have already seen. So what we start from is the pyridazine having substitution, uh, having both the chloros. From here to here, this has already been discussed when I discussed the chemistry of the pyridazine. So it's a pretty simple protocol. The first treatment is basically uh, attack of ammonia because these are these systems are highly electron deficient. So they undergo nuclear brick substitution reaction pretty fast. That is what I discussed in those chapters. So the attack of first ammonia takes place to give you this amine. And why I said that the, the second attack of ammonia, why does not it take place? Because here it was electron deficient. Now this become electron rich because what you have is an aniline moiety. This aniline it gives electron density to the, the ring. That is the reason why now to felicitate the next nucleoflex nuclear flex substitution, what you need is a stronger nucleophile. So that is the reason why you use base with alcohol. What you generate is basically an alkoxide. Once you generate an alkoxide, it attacks the other chloro, and it is the slowest step. That is why it is under thermodynamically controlled condition. So everything has been discussed when I discuss the chemistry of the pyridazine. Okay, so once you have is this intermediate in hand, then what we do is basically we start from this. 2 bromo acid derivative. So, this is the derivative of the acid, right? Acid derivative. So, the reaction is pretty straightforward. The first is what is happening is basically you are forming an imine. So, this is the imine is forming. So, the water is getting ejected out of the system. So, as soon as this imine is formed, so you can imagine you can have different substituents here. So, the lone pair of electron nitrogen they attack the bromo to give you this particular intermediate. So here these hydrogen they come back to give you the final desired product. So how easily we can synthesize such molecules by elegant approaches. Now coming back to the other part here with this complicated looking thia, thiadiazole. So this is nothing but this uh, it is a drug having the name is Timolol which is used for high blood pressure beta blockers. So it's an important drug having this um, if you look at the number of heteroatoms, how many we have? Sulfur, nitrogen, 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 oxygen, 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 nitrogen. So it has a lot of heteroatoms in the molecule and we can synthesize it pretty easily. So the starting materials are pretty cheap. So what do we do is basically start it from the cyanamide reaction with the S2Cl2. So the first step of the reaction is the attack of this nitrogen on the sulfur. Okay, so what is happening? The sulfur is releasing, chloride ion is releasing out of the system. So the chloride ion which released it is but basically attacking this carbonyl to form this negative N negative. So this N negative is attacking the sulfur, chlorine is leaving. So what do you form is this intermediate. So in the next step, what we have is this chloroepoxide. So the only electron is a nitrogen cone and this oxygen is attacking terminal position and it is opening to give us this intermediate. So now what we are doing is basically we are treating with the tertiary butyl amine. So which is replacing the chloro and in the next step we are treating it with this uh, morpholine to give us the desired final molecule so we can see how elegantly we can synthesize such molecules okay so this was pretty much about this particular video thanks a lot for watching watching the video have a nice day bye